Where are you? Call me back right away. Ugh, I don't really want to though. I've been bombarded with calls recently. Could my secret relationship have been exposed? What are you talking about? Ugh, I've been trying so hard to keep it under wraps until now. How did it possibly come out? Seriously, what are you talking about? I have no idea. Oh, my bad, Megan. It's probably just as you're thinking. Right now, I'm chilling with your boyfriend, Boris, in this amazing hot tub. This trip was totally worth it. Hold on a second. What are you implying? What's going on? Why are you with my boyfriend? Oh, you didn't know? You didn't uncover our secret? What secret? No, you genuinely didn't know. Did I jump the gun and spill the beans too soon? You really didn't know I've been involved with Boris. Involved with my boyfriend? How could you? Wait, hold on. Explain that. You're saying you've been with my boyfriend? <laughs> I'm joking, duh. I thought you discovered my secret because you contacted me out of the blue. <laughs> Don't let me mislead you. What? Are you joking or not? Explain what's happening. Why are you with my fiance, Beverly? You said you went on a trip with my boyfriend. What's really going on? <laughs> Sorry, Megan. The truth is, well, how should I put this? We've been sneaking around your back for about a year. Why would you do that? Aren't we friends? Don't worry. I don't plan to ruin your marriage. I intend to end things with him before you guys actually get married, okay? That's not the issue here. Do you understand what you're doing? No, <laughs> what do you mean? How could you start something with your best friend's fiance? Why do you think stopping before we got married would make this okay? What are you trying to achieve? Oh, you seem really mad, huh? I was just trying to take your boyfriend. Is there something wrong with that? We were just having some fun. What's the big deal? Fine. Just get back as soon as possible. We can talk things out then. Ugh, I'm sorry, Megan. That might not be possible, though. What do you mean? We're planning to stay here for a couple of nights, so we can't really come back right away. Sorry, we'll be back the day after tomorrow. Are you seriously planning to continue your trip with my fiance in this situation? But wouldn't it be a waste to cut our trip short? We were treating ourselves to this vacation. The hotel is so expensive given the situation. Can't you just wait a bit? We'll be back the day after tomorrow, so I'm just gonna borrow your fiance until then, okay? I'll bring you back a souvenir, yeah? Your house is on fire, but you're so carefree. <laughs> Wait, what? I'm surprised you can enjoy your trip given the situation, but I hope you have a good time. I really admire how bold you are. Wait, my house is on fire? Is that what you said? What's going on? I need more information. Is my house really on fire? Yeah, that's right. That's why I was calling you so much. D really? That's why you were calling? But you just weren't picking up. So I was worried. I finally thought I'd send you a message. Were you just so busy having an affair with your best friend's fiance? You can quit messing around with me now. Uh, seriously? You're not kidding about my house being on fire, right, Megan? You're just joking. Sorry for worrying you. You'll be back the day after tomorrow, right? I'll let everybody who was worrying about you know that you're fine. I'll tell them that you're absolutely safe because you're off at a resort having an illicit love affair. Hey, Megan, is it true that there was a fire at Beverly's house? Yeah, it's all true. But seriously, Boris? Don't you think there's something more important you need to discuss with me right now? How could you take off with my best friend to a resort? We're engaged. Shut up. That doesn't matter now. There are many more critical things to deal with. The news about the fire has completely devastated Beverly. She's in tears. This is your fault. 
and it has nothing to do with our trip. What the heck? Are you serious? Boris, please tell me you're not messing with me. Shut up. Has Beverly's house really burnt down? You're not just saying this to upset me. Yeah, Beverly's place is completely destroyed. I mean, it's an apartment she was renting. Fortunately, it seems like the fire didn't spread to the entire complex, and thankfully no one was hurt. I can't believe this. If the trip is a disaster, how about coming home right away? Beverly needs to deal with the landlord and the fire department, and we also need to discuss this whole affair situation. Drop it. Now is not the time for that. Beverly is in absolute shock over the fire. She is completely depressed. Don't you think you should leave her alone for now? Leave her alone? If this has happened, I need to support Beverly. I have to make sure she'll be okay. Megan, let's just break up already. I can't leave Beverly like this. I don't know what could happen to her. You're ending things without even talking about it? We're supposed to get married. I'm sorry, Megan, but there's no way I can abandon Beverly now. She needs me. I did plan to marry you, but things changed. I'm calling off our engagement right away. I'm going to be with Beverly. We're going to get married. Seriously? Are you okay with just letting me go after we got engaged? You're really doing this. Even if you don't have me, you still have a place to go back to, right? But Beverly's home is gone. She needs a place to stay, and I need to provide that for her. What is happening? I want to protect her. I want to make sure she's okay. So I'm asking you to let this happen. Let the relationship end. Please don't try to hold on to it. I want to be with Beverly. She needs me, and I want to be with her. Fine. Do as you please. A cheating jerk like you is dishing me. I don't care. Get lost. Live with her. Marry her. Do whatever you want. Megan, thank you for agreeing. I just need to be there for Beverly now. I hope you find it in your heart to forgive me someday. Screw all of you. Hey, I've got something to tell you. We've just started filling out our marriage paperwork. What do you want? It's Boris. He consoled me for three days straight at the hotel. And he told me that he wanted to live with me and get married. I was so surprised. I'm just so elated. We got back into town and immediately started filling out the paperwork to get married. Well, that's nice, I guess. You used your best friend as a stepping stone so that you could start your new life with the husband that you stole. <laughs> wow, you're so mad, huh? I just lost my house in the fire, but I guess it wasn't the worst thing. I got a husband in exchange for that lousy old apartment. What a lucky windfall, huh? It seems like quite a bad break though, don't you think? What are you trying to say? Are you being a poor loser? Don't be bitter, okay? I understand that you might be bitter because Boris ditched you from me, but you just have to get over yourself. Aren't you happy that your best friend is getting married? Shouldn't you be congratulating me? Who in the world would ever celebrate in this situation? Why would I even be friends with you any longer, Beverly? I don't want to see you ever again. Leave me alone. I stole your fiance. That's no reason to end our friendship. Oh, you're so close-minded, Megan. I'm surprised. I thought you were less of a stick in the mud. What do you mean by that? Uh, your fiance was screwing me behind your back for a whole year. Isn't that a mistake on you? You're just playing the victim. No, I just am the victim. You stole your best friend's fiance. I'll definitely never forgive you. You need to take responsibility for what you've done. Responsibility? Do you think I need to pay you or something for your fiance dumping you? Yeah. I do. You're insane. My home just burned down. You have lost nothing, you know? Shouldn't you, as my best friend, be helping me out? Even financially. You might have lost something, but got a husband. 
So aren't you fine? Anyhow, do you intend on moving into Boris's house? Of course. If my home's burnt down, it's fine to live in my fiance's home before we get married. I'll actually just be like we're living the newlywed life. A fire is actually spread all the way to Boris's house as well. Wait, what? There's actually a giant fire there right this very second. It's all over social media. You should be able to see what I'm talking about right away. It seems to be hitting his parents as well. Man, what karma. I feel bad for his parents. There's actually a fire there. You can't be serious. Is this some sort of joke? Fire might be a bit misleading with how your house actually burnt down. By fire, I mean an angry mob like they're burning to get their hands on Boris. Oh, by the way, I told you, didn't I? I was going to let everyone know, right? I had to let everybody know that you were okay, Beverly. I didn't want anybody to worry about you. I told the world that you were absolutely fine because you were in an illicit love affair with my then fiance and nobody was in your apartment. I mean, everybody was so torn up with worry for you. I couldn't just leave them hanging with the stress that you might be dead, you know? People were posting all over social media about it after I let the world know. That can't really be happening. How could you do this to me? I guess it was a good thing that I posted our chat logs from WhatsApp, huh? That way I could show evidence that you were absolutely okay, Beverly. No, oh, you really let everybody on social media know that I slept with your former fiance? I know that you're bitter because the trolley was taken from you, but there is no reason to let everybody know. You shouldn't have gone so far as telling everybody what happened. And you especially shouldn't have leaked our messages. That was private. Where did this sudden personality change come from? Wouldn't it be fine to act just as pompous as earlier in front of everybody? Everybody is in an uproar over the fact that you stole your best friend's fiance. You really told everybody? Uh-huh. I made sure to even contact Boris's parents. The fires of social media backlash seem to have reached right in front of his house. There's a huge horde of people waiting for him. Yep. It sure does sound like there are a whole lot of people waiting outside of his house to tear him apart once he gets home. There are actually people waiting for him at his home? They want to make sure that he takes proper responsibility for rescinding his engagement. His parents have unfortunately already thoroughly torn into their son's actions. I'm sure his parents are going to really want to have a word with you too as well. I don't want any of this. We're just coming back from our fun, relaxing vacation though. Hey, you'll be able to let his parents know of your intentions to get married at the same time. Won't that be convenient? I hope they accept you as their new daughter-in-law. Oh, right. It'll be my first time meeting Boris's parents, huh? Boris's parents are both teachers, so they really don't like non-traditional things. I hope they can approve of a couple that are like you. Parents are definitely always happy to hear that their son is getting married, no matter what kind of people they are. We even made sure to bring them back souvenirs from our trip. If we give them souvenirs, I'm sure it'll be a great first impression, so everything will go great. I'm really impressed by just how much boldness you have. I could never be that stupidly confident. I'm getting married, so my in-laws should definitely be on my side. I'm not afraid of anything, even if you do try to extort money out of poor Boris. I'm sorry for what's happened, Megan, but you've just got to accept reality. I'm gonna live a happy newlywed life with Boris, and that's just the way it's gonna be. Please go right ahead and live whatever life you want. I'll talk to you some other time. I can't stand this any longer. This life is the worst. Megan, I'm begging you. You need to help us. What do you want? We need a lot of money right now. Boris sent you some money to apologize for calling off the engagement, right? I want you to return that money he sent you. I don't know why I would return the money he sent me. In the end, his parents didn't take your guy's side and told him to make it right with me, huh? 
They told him he needed to take responsibility and make up for having hurt somebody. They said if you wanted them to give their blessing to your marriage, you need to pay me 20 grand. No, I'm just asking you to return it temporarily. Once things have calmed down, he'll pay you back. So I just want you to return the 20 grand for now. That 20 grand was just in gifts at your wedding ceremony. You're not being serious, right? A wedding ceremony is a once in a lifetime opportunity. He is 130 grand in debt. Did you know that? I'm begging you. So please just return the 20 grand temporarily. You have to send it back to us right away. What was that? You guys are 130 grand in debt? What happened? It's the cost of repairs because of the fire. It was decided that I have to pay for all the repair costs to my old apartment. It's gonna be 130 grand. Why do you have to pay the repair costs, Beverly? It was a rental apartment. So you had insurance in case of fire, right? Um, I forgot to pay my insurance. You forgot to pay your insurance? Or you chose not to? Look, when I moved in, I paid for two years worth of insurance up front, but I was planning my big trip with Boris and I was supposed to pay my insurance again, but it was just so expensive. I thought I'd just put it off a little bit. You know, I thought it wouldn't hurt if I just skipped it for a month or two while I dealt with other expenses. You've got to be lying to me. Why didn't you just pay it monthly? Because my landlord told me I had to pay it in a two year long lump sum. My landlord was looking the other way on me waiting to pay the lump sum. I honestly had only let the insurance lapse for a couple of days, but that's when the fire happened. So now my landlord is putting me on the hook for all the damage. So then the fire really happened when you weren't uninsured? That's right. That's why I have to pay all the repair costs all by myself. What am I gonna do? What awful timing to have a fire start at your place. Oh, it's not my fault that there was a fire. Morris was smoking in my apartment and he didn't put his cigarette out properly. Wait, it was Boris's cigarette that started the fire? Yeah, so Boris said he would take responsibility for everything with me. But he didn't think it would be this much with the money his parents made him pay you. He doesn't have any savings left. That's why I need you to send us back the 20 grand we paid you. Just for now, please. We need to pay off that 130 grand first before anything else. We'll pay you back the 20 grand as soon as we paid it off, I promise. I'm begging you for just a little bit of help, Megan. I'm sorry, Beverly, but I can't. It really is too bad, but I've spent the whole 20 grand. You spent it all? Already? Yeah, so I can't help you. I couldn't even help you if I wanted to. Do your best to scrounge up some money. Oh, hold on just a second. You really used it all up. You spent the entirety of two people's worth of savings that quickly. What kind of an idiot would spend 20 grand after just a few days? It's important to spend money you just luck your way into quickly. You never know what might happen. At least that was my logic. Megan, I'm on my knees here. You've got to help us. I'll do anything, so just don't abandon me here. I can't get out of this by myself. Didn't you hear what I told Beverly? I've already spent all the money you gave me. I don't have your 20 grand anymore. So you can just give up already. No, that's not what I'm asking for today. I'm not messaging you to ask for money. What do you want then? As far as the cost of repairing Beverly's old apartment, that's on me. I'm part of the reason any of it happened, so I intend to scrounge up money from all over to pay it off. You don't need to lend us any money, Megan. It's fine. I'd never hold it against you for not wanting to help us with that because you really have nothing to do with it. But would it be possible for you to let me stay with you? Stay with me? You want me to let you come stay with me? Are you kidding? We suddenly need to get out of my house. I called up the landlord to let them know that I was getting married and a new person would be moving in with me. Well, when I did that, he told me that he wanted me out. He wouldn't rent his house to me any longer. 
He said I had a month to get lost before he'd have me evicted. Where am I supposed to go? I guess my first question is, what have you done this time? I didn't do anything at all. Honest. But it seems that it got out that Beverly's apartment is the one that caught on fire. And I don't think he liked the idea of his house catching on fire. He told me that he couldn't trust me. Therefore, he could no longer allow me to rent from him. That sounds rough. In a panic, I went to a bunch of other landlords to look for a place, but none of them wanted to rent to me. How could they all have found that it was Beverly's apartment that caught fire? The idea of a person who not only would cause a fire but also forgot to pay their insurance makes you persona non grata in the eyes of landlords. No matter what landlord we tried to go to, they refused to let us stay in their rental. I guess trust is the number one factor in trying to rent a place. Now, even if I try to rent a place all on my own, I get denied. The only one I can think to ask at this point is you, Megan. Why don't you just ask your parents? Why would you go to me before your parents? My parents have already thoroughly disowned me. I tried to ask them to loan me some money to help pay off the damages to Beverly's old apartment, and that did it. They told me that our relationship would no longer be that of parent-child, but now it would be that of creditor-debtor. They told me they would no longer think of me as family. I guess that's what it's like to have teachers for parents. They're strict, even with their own son. You've got an empty room at your place, don't you? You've got quite the memory, don't you? I was just your fiancé up until a few days ago. I'm really begging you here. Won't you let me use just that one room? Beverly and I can live in a small room, just the two of us. We won't cause any trouble. We'll pay rent and everything. You're my only hope, Megan. Won't you give me some place to stay? Did you think you'd ask me that? And I just let you stay with me? You need to consider the position you're in. And what you've done to me. You betrayed me. You married my best friend. That's the kind of jerk you are. But if you let me rent out that room, it would be like nothing happened. We'd be able to live under the same roof, just like if we'd actually got married. Are you stupid or something? Come on, Megan. You still have some lingering feelings for me, don't you? I married Beverly, but that doesn't mean we necessarily have to be over. I'm sure you'd be happy to be able to live with me, right? Don't you miss me? So you should just rent me that single room. You'd be able to enjoy the feeling of living with me that you missed out on. That'll make you happy, right, Megan? Don't mock me. You foolish, foolish man. And stop all your delusions. What bullshit is that? Listen here. I've already moved into a very spacious single bedroom apartment downtown, so you're out of luck. It's like a penthouse. There isn't anywhere in my apartment where you could sleep. You did what? You move into a penthouse? A big spacious penthouse? Wait, Megan, when did you move? It could have been... You're right. I moved the second you sent me that 20 grand. My old place you used to come by all the time. So I couldn't stand being incited any longer. It was just filled with so many depressing memories. I just needed to get out of there. So the place you moved to was a penthouse. Where did that come from? I wanted to use up all the money you sent me. But there wasn't really anything I wanted. So I thought really hard and decided I could make a down payment on a penthouse. I'd always wanted to try living in the heart of the city, way up high in a penthouse. I can't believe you did something like that. What am I going to do? It's all thanks to you that I was able to find such a nice place. It's so big and spacious. Oh, and the views are absolutely incredible. I think I'll be living here for quite a while. So I don't think I can help you at all on the housing front. Sorry. I guess you're just going to have to go elsewhere to find some empty room you can shock up in. Wait, Megan. I'm begging you. Let me stay with you. Anywhere is fine. Even just in the entryway. We could sleep in front of the entryway, so just let us into your home. If you don't help us out, we're going to be homeless. I don't see any other alternative. I mean... Even if you don't have a home, you still have a wife that you love, don't you? You've got to do your best to get along as husband and wife. You're just screwing with me, aren't you? Are you really going to just abandon me? 
Will you really let me be homeless? I was your fiancé. How could you leave me to this fate? Beverly is your best friend. How could you leave her to this fate? Are you telling me that you're just going to abandon the two of us? Yup. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I intended any relationship we used to have to have been thoroughly severed. I have no attachments to either of you after what you guys did to me. I don't care where the two of you fools end up or what happens to you. How could you be so heartless? Well, I hope you have a fun and wonderful newlywed life. After that, Boris and Beverly secured positions that offered company housing, primarily to secure a place to stay. Though the circumstances led them to find some form of housing, the daunting burden of $130,000 debt prevented any semblance of a honeymoon period. Their days have been consumed by relentless work, dedicated not only to their primary jobs, but also to chipping away at the mountain of debt. In addition to their main employment, it appears they've taken on additional side gigs. This has resulted in what seems to be a rather grim start to their newlywed life.